Cassidy Choi is a talented author from Hawaii. With a diverse academic background, she holds a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, a Bachelor of Art in Business Administration with a concentration in Economics, and a Master of Business Administration. Choi's debut novel, She Lies Still, was released last month, and it revolves around a young woman who enters into a relationship with her professor, challenging the traditional Lolita trope by exploring the idea that younger women may not necessarily be a victim. The novel tackles mental health, social interactions and the importance of finding one's direction. And Cassidy joins us now. How are you today? I'm doing well. I'm actually on the East Coast, so it's pretty early for me and I'm not much yes. of a morning person. <laughs> well, what was it that actually inspired you to write this book? So I think for me, it was a lot of the t- different types of people that I was talking to, surrounding myself with. And I thought it was really interesting how we all tend to view ourselves as the hero. Yeah. And for me, I always kind of saw everyone as very complex and everyone is deeply flawed. So I thought it would be interesting to challenge a traditional idea and then also ha- add a twist to it and make something where no one's really a good guy in the story. How did you manage to approach the delicate subject matter of challenging that traditional stereotype of women perhaps being a victim? So I think there's two things there. I think a big part of it is I'm very self-deprecating yeah. and so I'm constantly <laughs> thinking about all of the things wrong with me. And so I think being very honest with oneself and also being willing to communicate that and yeah. maybe not being ashamed to vocalize it as much as helpful for that sort of <clears throat> I guess, description of a character. And then as for maybe how that person would also describe others, right? Maybe it would be really critical or they would project a lot of their own feelings onto others as well. That's the thing. I suppose if you're quite self-deprecating, you can put that in characters that are quite flawed. So how do you go about developing characters that are flawed? And do you think it makes them feel more realistic? I think it can. I also think that it just makes a character more relatable to different types of people. I think there's always going to be someone in a movie, a book, or even in real life where you might not relate to them 100%, but there's certain things or maybe in their internal dialogue or even in their, you know, outward dialogue with their friends that you can relate to. So I think it makes it easier to click with someone when they're more maybe in their head or internal and even critical or funny or horrible. (laughs) Yeah. Mental health as well is quite a big theme in the book. Do you think it's quite important to discuss that within a book? I think that it's important to lay it out. I mean, I have, as you've listed, I have no psychological (laughs) background. I just think it's important to maybe portray certain things in a certain way. So I would never say, oh, this person has this, or I've diagnosed this person with that. But you'll notice different traits or characteristics with some of the characters and think, okay, there's, that's something else, you know, there's something more there. And you mentioned about your background there, you've got quite a big academic background. You've got all sorts of qualifications in maths, business, economics. Has that influenced your writing at all? I would honestly say no. If anything, it's distracted me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I spent a lot of my life maybe just studying what I thought other people thought I should. And I've always enjoyed yeah. writing. So this has just been a passion project for me. Most of your qualifications are to do with numbers. So when it comes to writing, is it completely different? Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> and I think I would say with any creative process, everyone has their different ways to go about it. And perhaps I was really methodical about it, yeah. you know, in retrospect. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, I would say not much went into it. Maybe just what made me decent at something was something I applied to writing as well. Yeah. Were you maybe more efficient somehow if you know how to deal with maths <laughs> and statistics? You'd maybe go, right, today I need to write this amount of words and you will <laughs> be more likely to stick to that than another author maybe? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I unfortunately don't have a huge community of writers around me. I wish yeah. I could bounce these ideas off of them and give you a <laughs> better answer. But uh, no, I would just chunk it. You know, I'd be like, okay, a chapter today or like two chapters today. So, yeah. Were there any particular challenges when writing the book? Sure, yeah. I think what comes with something that maybe takes a lot of emotional energy is so, there's a lot of times where I would just not touch it for, you know, a couple weeks or a couple months. And then I'd always 
feel guilty about not working on it when it was something that I really wanted to do. But other than that, you know, like I said, I'm pretty self-deprecating. So all of the hard stuff to drudge up (laughs) was just how I talk to people normally. (laughs) How did you deal with that if you hadn't worked on it for a few months and then came back to it? Was it easy to come back into it? It was because I already had an idea of how I wanted it to go. You know, I mean, if it was something like creating a sci-fi or, you know, a completely different world or something, I think it would have been a lot harder. I'd be looking for those strikes of creativity or ideas. But I think it, because I already knew how it was going to go, that might have also made it easier to not work on it because I was like, well, I, you know, I'll get to it. I already know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Was there ever a point where you felt like giving up along the way or it was always there as something you wanted to do? So it's actually something that I only wanted to do about a year and a half ago is when I started working on it. So I think because I gave myself such such a time crunch and because it just happened recently, I didn't have enough time to completely lose interest. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. so... I wanted to work on something. I'm the type of person where I have a lot of input. You know, I'm constantly reading. I'm always listening to people, but I never really created anything. So it was really important for me to produce something and feel proud about it. And have you got any more books coming up in the future that we can expect? Well, I am working on another one right now, but it's very rough in the works. So, But it's similar in theme to mental health, narratives, kind of an aimless main character, wreaking havoc (laughs) without trying to. So far, would you say your books are following a similar theme? I would say so. Yeah, I would say that they're these comprised versions of really negative qualities that I think that some people can relate to at some point in their life and find some intrigue in. And I feel like it makes people feel like they're not alone. Yeah. Would you ever consider doing a book about things you've studied, maybe a maths textbook? It feels completely different to what you've done already, but it could be a thing. Yeah, I mean, it's something that I've honestly lost a lot of interest in. But I think as I start exercising that writing muscle more yes. than going back to that sort of area of study and working on something like that might be something interesting. Actually, it might have just given me a really good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they say that a tidy environment is a sign of a tidy mind. So I don't know what the cushions suggest. <laughs> chaos. I yes. actually just moved. So. All right. Have you just moved from Hawaii or have you been somewhere else between that? Yeah, I've moved around a lot. So I've yeah. moved to Washington State, LA, Japan, and then now I'm in New York. Wow. That's quite an exciting life. This book is of course called She Lies Still. Where are we able to find it? So you're able to find it on all major online retailers. So Amazon, Barnes and Noble, things like that. So yeah. Google it. Excellent. Well, many thanks for talking to us today. It's been great having you on. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me.